No coof, no terrorists, no, just a nice little return to normalcy, if it were, just taking a look at what the elites are out there they're championing and telling you that, uh, oh, uh, you plebs, uh, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, we're properly taken care of. You guys can fend for yourself. We don't really care what you're up to. Yeah, we've got three instances of that, of just people who have just absolute fucking derangement and how it's playing out. Oh, they're all a part of the party of morality and well-being but at the same time as somebody getting fucking hatchet attacked literally like old school fucking scalping attacks in a fucking atm area bill de blasio uh, says hey it's rare we shouldn't be concerned about that he's a fucking dickhead if there's one place that i'd like for the taliban to turn up in it's probably new york city so they could do some of that old tarring and feathering for de blasio but we got this little editorial piece so i uh, just mind the verbiage i suppose mayor de blasio is really worried about the shocking random attack in an atm vestibule by a man wielding a hatchet worried that it is that we may stereotype people with mental health issues very very few mentally ill people have a violence problem doesn't matter we're talking about this guy he might be mentally ill but he also has a violence problem you should be concerned about him. We're not talking about the entire group. We're talking about one laser-focused individual right here. But this is what they do. That's why I'm always banging on about, okay, if you want to use these fucking broad nebulous term like, oh, Bill de Blasio's an SJW. Oh, he's woke. Okay, that's cool. That'll cast the net out there. That'll get some people's attention. But then when you reel it in, you have to start peeling out this type of stuff. He's a Marxist. He's a third-wave feminist. He is all of the most terrible aspects of critical race theory of woke culture he's all that type of stuff but you need to be specific you have to get out ahead of these people these people who would hide behind all of these different facades the oh we need to talk about mental illness and stop stigmatizing it no just fucking cut right through that shit and just talk straight to the individual stop obfuscating the actual points Cold comfort to the victim lying in the hospital bed with stab wounds. Don't worry, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah, in case when it happens to you, then I guess sucks to suck. In October 2019, four, four homeless men were bludgeoned to death by a mentally ill man with a pipe. In Wednesday er, in February of this year, a mentally ill man went to a subway stabbing spree, killing two. And a mentally ill woman was arrested this week for trying to shove a man onto the tracks. And even in a tiny percentage of the mentally ill turned violent, the small group still instills fear and death across the city. Not to even mention the gang violence that is running rampant in New York City. This isn't stereotyping. This is begging. Begging to Blasio to have one iota of compassion and thought, really, because these perpetrators are victims too, in treatment or in or on medication. They would likely be horrified by the violence they have done. Perhaps most of them just have natural proclivities towards violence, and they're just acting it acting it out under the auspices of oh, I'm on the spectrum, so I need to I don't know try to get the gold out of this guy's skull. It's fucking sick. It's fucking disgusting. But will you actually figure out where any of the money went that was supposed to be appropriated towards mental illness projects? Or is that some of that money that uh, Bill de Blasio's wife, who is an unelected official, by the way, but who is appointed to the mental illness board... Uh, that she managed to squirrel away and make it disappear and there was no inquiry into that so democrats can literally get away with mm, attempted murder in this case the administration has burned more than 1.25 billion dollars on this folly then they tell cops to leave the mentally ill sleeping on the streets social workers do not force anyone into shelter even if they aren't in their right minds because social workers are inept no no let them freeze go to the public or go to the bathroom in public sleep on concrete i don't know meet a friend by tapping a friendly shoe underneath a stall door because they insist that oh they get help would be unfair of course they're allowed to live their best life out there sharpening their fucking shiv to try to extract the lucky charms from the voices and the heads I tell them to knife the irish guy with the fucking red beard Thank God he's almost gone, but it's going to take decades in order to clean this shit up because Eric Adams seems like a pretty de er, decent guy, but uh, Rudy Giuliani number two, he ain't. Maybe that's for a good thing. But how about Lady Gaga, somebody who was out there on the campaign trail for Joe Biden just stumping and trying to pretend that she's one of those regular people with that super cringe fucking truck campaign ad. I don't know if you guys remember that one, but she uh, was hanging on the side of a truck, uh, cracking open a beer and fucking cam she's a goof anyways and she's a really shitty human being i know i'm not really you know breaking any 
perceptions of Hollywood and music elites, but uh, yeah, her dog walker got shot trying to protect her dogs when they were trying to be dog napped. Is that the proper terminology? And yeah, oh, she was uh, super happy that her dogs were fine, but uh, doesn't give a fuck about the guy who just about gave up his life in order to save her dogs. Lady Gaga's dog walker, Ryan Fisher, feels abandoned, begs for donations. Yeah, um, because he's been shot and uh, Lady Gaga doesn't give a flying fuck about him. But she's all about the little guy, right? Lady Gaga's hero dog walker, who was shot protecting her beloved pooches, says he now feels abandoned and unsupported, leaving him homeless and begging for money. This is not an easy thing for me to ask, Ryan Fisher, 40 years old, 40 year old dog walker, really bro? Oh well. Uh, wrote as he launched a GoFundMe seeking $40,000 to help him buy a van and drive across the U.S. on a process of growing from trauma. Or how about paying off your medical bills? That could be one thing, too. Uh, Fisher started his trip soon after leaving a Los Angeles hospital. The former dog walker had to undergo surgery after being shot in the chest by armed dog nappers as, she tried, oh, as he tried to protect the shallow star French bulldogs. His fundraiser included a video showing him in the hospital bed as well as images of bullet wounds and a soundtrack someone shouting about being angrier than ever at times i was scared i was uh, lonely i felt abandoned and unsupported i had long bouts of depression this didn't happen that long ago how long could these bouts of depression be anyways and doubt and self-pity okay listen i know you've been victimized but you don't need to fucking play the card okay you've been shot gaga's turned her back on you i think that's a good enough case to be made to don't try to push this hole i feel bad for myself give me money I'm like, ugh. dial it back it's still on your side on this one trust me but he recently said goodbye to trudy a quasi reliable 1991 ford falcon sweet rental that drove like a boat on in high wind probably steered like one as well as he traveled across the u.s from gaga's home in la back to his native new york be a fun trip but jesus christ bro so here i am i have no clear purpose but i am in an obvious impasse he wrote with no vehicle apartment and having run out of savings and surviving on donations from generous loved ones i'm humbly asking for help the cash would get him a new van and you know, seeking out communities of support and growing a trauma but let's get to the you know ultimate question why isn't this ugh? you know what there was comparisons earlier in her career by some very smooth-brained individuals that said that oh yeah she's the fr female freddie mercury um for those people i would say invest in q-tips and clean out your ears and then summarily stab them into your eyes because you are no use to society but i would rather fuck the corpse of freddie mercury all things considered than get anywhere near that a horrific picture um question why won't lady gaga help you out one follower asked she was willing to provide five hundred thousand dollars for the safe return of her dog so i'm thinking that giving you forty thousand dollars would be a drop in a bucket yeah not even ten percent uh do we got an answer wow this is shocking why had lady gaga not helped you one follower asked while other fans insisted she helped with medical bills oh don't worry she uh, took care of that can you provide any of those receipts nope Another asked why the wealthy person connected to all of this was not helping him, uh, saying, I'm just confused. Reps for the star did not immediately respond to page six for requests for comment. So he returned her dogs back to her after she issued the $500,000 request for their safe return. And what did he get? I don't know. Fired from his job? What a shitty, shitty bitch, honestly. But to be fair, uh, he also got a couple new cool bullet wounds and... Um, I don't know, a nice soundtrack for his GoFundMe video. God, that sucks. But it's not even like the shittiest person that's out there. Like Larry David, a great comedy writer, writer for Seinfeld, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David show. Apparently very funny. I haven't watched anything that he's ever done, but I've heard good things. Um, screamed at Alan Dershowitz, uh, the best living lawyer right now at grocery store over Trump ties because uh, TDS is a terminal, terminal diagnosis. Seems that Alan Dershowitz's ties to Trump administration made him persona non grata among the Martha Vineyards elite, including Larry David. Remember, a tr er, Alan Dershowitz's ties to Trump? He doesn't like Trump. He didn't vote for Trump. Both times he voted for Clinton and he voted for Biden. He only represented him in the impeachment trial because he has a very strong moral compass when it comes to constitutional law tend to side with them on a bunch of stuff like that do we disagree when it comes politically yeah of course we very much differ when it comes to that but he's one of those old school 
traditional Democrat liberal types where, you know what, we have some common ground because we tend to like freedom. We just disagree on the path to get there. But Larry David, though, um, orange man bad syndrome, really, really bad case. Page six spy spotted the Harvard Law professor who was once, like David, a fully paid up member of the Democratic Cool Kids Club. Yup. Bumping into the comic on the porch of the island's picturesque uh, convenience store and community hub, Chill Mark General Store, and found their exchange so bizarre that they wrote it down to remember it. Page six strongly recommends that readers enjoy the following while you play Curb Your Enthusiasm theme tune in your heads. Dershowitz. Ah. Uh, we can still talk, Larry. David. No, no, we really can't. I saw you. I saw you with your arm around former <laughs> Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. It's disgusting. Okay? Sure, you've been in equally compromising situations there, Larry, but uh, whatever. Dershowitz, uh, he's my former student at Harvard Law. I greet all my former students. That way, I can't greet my former students. Uh, Larry David, it's disgusting. Your whole enclave, it's disgusting. You're disgusting. Diseased. Unwashed. What a fucking creep. Added the stunned source, Larry walks away. Alan takes off his t-shirt to reveal another t-shirt underneath of it, and it says, It's the Constitution, stupid. <laughs> oh my god, just a couple of old fucking Jews having a disagreement outside of a bodega. How very, very, very New York. How very, very East Coast. Reached for comment, Dershowitz confirmed the exchange and told us that he and the Curb creator had been friends for many years until the lawyer began working with the Trump camp. He even claimed that he helped out one of David's daughters to get into college and had once represented him pro bono in a legal dispute he had in Massachusetts Island where they both spend their summers. He told us that he greeted David at the store and the comic had walked away from him, in which he said, uh, we can still talk, Larry, and the spy picked up on the dialogue, of course. Uh, Dershowitz told us that it might sound on paper like an awkward scene from Curb. It wasn't funny at all. It doesn't sound like it, but hey, you take talking points from any of these fucking Hollywood idiots, you get what you deserve. I think you guys are smarter than that, and uh, yeah, it's it's just fun to kind of detour away from talking about, well, really the decline in Western civilization for a minute, but people telling you that go Palestine and orange man bad, they're really just creeps to the bone. With that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Gonzuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Catch y'all later.